All right, let's, just gonna hold it. let's talk the real dirt on herbal education and getting an herbal education. Um, you know, we have people that are live here joining us and I think people are gonna listen. I first want to start off with why are we at all equipped to talk about this? Um, maybe you could introduce yourself and just say like, why, why are you, um, you know, a good resource for herbal education and, and hearing about this? Okay. Um, so I've been, so I'm a clinical herbalist and I've been in clinical practice uh, for over 15 years. Um, and as part of my journey um, to my work, um, education was, you know, really, really critical to me. Quality of education was really critical to me. And so I kind of went to the um, extreme, I suppose, as far as getting educated by moving over to the UK and getting like a four-year degree program. Um, and so I've been through extensive education, but then, you know, on top of that, I have also been in clinical practice for a very long time. And because of that, my work surrounds education. I mean, as a clinician, that's, you know, 100% the work that I do is really just helping people to um, learn about how to take care of their bodies with herbs. So I don't know, I guess, I guess that's why I'm qualified. How about you? <laughs> yeah, well, I think um, similar to you, I, I, you know, I started off kind of playing around in the woods and, and taking, you know, herb walks, but um, I did also kind of seek out a more advanced or not advanced, but just kind of a more rigorous type of program at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. Um, so I, I've been practicing now for about 12 years um, and did a three or full time in person program uh, that had a clinical portion to it. And then now I run an herb school. Uh, right now it's all online because of COVID, um, but hopefully it'll be more in person soon. Um, and then the thing that we both have in common is that we both have served on the education committee for the American Herbalist Guild. So, you know, that's another piece that we've both kind of had our hands in the, you know, in the soil of herbal education from a more um, uh, national perspective. So, so I think, I think, I think we're quite qualified to talk on this, on this topic, but I think some people might not be prepared for what we're actually going to say, <laughs> given all of that. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's start with the very first piece here. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what do you think, you know, what, what do you think people need to be focused on when, when thinking about an herbal education? Well, I think that um, it's really the best place to start is in focusing on how to incorporate herbs um, into your own kind of health and self-care regimen. Um, I think one of the best ways to learn about herbs is to work with them personally and have your, you know, have experience, personal direct experience with them in your body. Right? So to me, that's like, that to me is like the number one way of starting to really get into herbs, um, you know, tasting them, making teas, making tinctures, making different preparations of the same plant um, in all of its different forms and getting to know it like you want to get to know a person. Um, and so, you know, I think that that from that perspective, you know, in learning about herbs directly, you know, and trusting your own experiences really can serve as a great platform for expanding that education outwards towards helping other people. Um, I think that sometimes we get it backwards, you know, we're like, oh, I want to be an herbalist because I want to help other people. And I think that's a wonderful goal. Um, obviously, that's why a lot of us are involved in herbalism. Um, but I think that the work has to start with yourself first and you have to kind of go down that path of learning and um, experiencing and also, you know, making changes um, so you can experience that kind of path on your own before, um, you know, trying to usher other people down. So I, that's, I think that's what I would have to say. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I feel like I, I ran a yoga studio for about 10 years and it was very interesting too, because we would have sometimes people come in to take a yoga teacher training and they'd only done yoga a few times, but they were like, but I really want to teach this. And it's like, those people had a much harder time 
really getting the most out of the program and being able to be really good teachers because they just didn't have that embodied experience of that practice of mm -hmm. yoga before they were trying to then teach it. So then we had to change our guidelines and say, you need at least two years of regular practice, right? And so I think that's a great point too with herbal medicine. It's like, you need to know the plants and have a base understanding because all of the other pieces are gonna make more sense when you've had a lived in experience of mm -hmm. how herbs are healing. And it's not just this sort of esoteric or kind of abstract idea about herbs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that embodied experience is a starting point also kind of starts to illuminate, you know, this idea in my perspectives anyway, about herbs and how we can use herbs to support ourselves. Um, that we can start to learn more about herbs as tools to, to help and support the body rather than herbs as solutions. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, a lot of herbal education is geared towards, you know, use this herb for that problem and memorize this list of actions and memorize this chemistry and memorize this, you know, all of these things. And while all of that's very important um, for sure, I feel like it's actually taken, you know, it, it does a disservice to herbalism in a lot of ways by suggesting that somehow herbs can fix problems. And I, I don't think they can, not on their own, you know? Um, and so when we, when we kind of start to work with herbs it, for our own bodies, um, it opens up this opportunity for us to learn more about how other aspects of um, how we treat our bodies come into play along with those herbs and that herbal support. So nutrition and body movement, uh, stress management, you know, uh, joy, all of these things that can be uh, also very supportive to the being. And so one of the things I like to encourage my students to do is to kind of get away from rote memorization of herbal facts um, and start focusing more on herbs as um, supportive tools in a larger kind of picture. Um, and so, and that, and, that, and that really allows too, I think, for students to start to feel very empowered by their experiences, like one-on-one -on -one experiences with plants. Like, you know, gosh, I had this like profound experience with dandelion leaf, you know, and this is how it felt in my body. And, and you're gonna hold on to that information and you're gonna carry that with you uh, you know, into your supportive work with other people. So it's kind of a paradigm shift, you know, but I'm not a fan of like, use this herb to treat that problem. I just don't think it's that easy. You know, I wish it was, but it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, because then, then it would be a million dollar business because we would have a pill that would fix everything, you know? <laughs> but pharmaceuticals are for like totally different paradigm, you know? Um, you know, and it's, I think too, it's like, I don't believe that there's something that herbs are capable of doing that pharmaceutical medicine isn't in the sense of like treating problems. Do you know what I mean? So I think a lot of people think that sometimes herbs can be this like, I don't know, arcane kind of like magical like fix. And I just don't really believe that's how it works, honestly. Um, the one thing that herbalism really does, especially as, you know, we, we're learning it as students, um, it, it's about teaching ourselves to, to be the solution rather than swallow the solution. Um, and that's, I think that's the paradigm difference, you know, so. I love that. Yeah. And that's what you teach in your school. You know, I've taken some of your courses, um, you know, just online, but you know, you do such a great job of making it experiential. I mean, you're a medicine maker, so you make medicines. And in some of your courses, you actually send out, like I did a sensory, uh, one of your sensory courses where we would actually make a tea with one of the herbs, take the flower essence of that plant. And then you would teach us about it as we, you know, as we were actually experiencing it. And that is a very different way of, you know, of learning about plants than just saying, you know, oh, I have a headache. I'm going to take this herb that's supposed to be for headaches. And, you know, my body constitution is different than yours. You know, like I might be hotter and you might be cooler or you might be drier. I might be moister. And so our experience of those plants can be, you know, radically different based on who we are um, and where we are with our health and our mental well-being. And so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, like you're saying, you know, in order, you know, it's, it's not just to you know, be able to kind of memorize this herb for that thing, although that gets helpful as you get later on in your studies in terms of understanding pharmacology and chemistry. But, but in the beginning, it's just 
how does this herb feel in my body? What do I notice? And, you know, for me as an herbalist, it's like, I have, I have my core 20 plants. Like those are my buddies. Like I know them. They're like my BFFs. I know exactly when they work. I know when they're not really going to work. I know which kind of people they're going to be ideal for. I know what they blend with nicely. And so, but that's been an, a relationship that I've cultivated, you know, over the last, you know, 15, 20 years. It's not something that I, I actually you know, the books helped and the courses helped, but that was something that was personal, right? Is yeah. that kind of what you would, do you feel yeah. like that's for you too? I love that. I love this. Um, you know, I think the realization that it can take years to really get to know a plant, just like it takes years to really get to know a person, right? Um, and one of the things, you know, in our, our planted dyadica program, which is kind of like our, one of our core kind of intro programs, it's really this idea that, um, you know, we need to, that we need to honor relationship, right? And, and learning about herbs is not about necessarily just memorizing facts, although, you know, facts and your teacher's opinions and what you read in books is all, it all qualifies, right? Scientific research all qualifies, but at the root of um being an herbalist it's it's about relationship with those plants and it can take decades um and you know i think a lot of people will come to herbal education wanting to like wanting the fast track wanting to know all the things right now so they can have an more of an empowered sensation about maybe their health and wellness um but it just it's it is it, it is long term um, and these are relationships that you're going to have for the rest of your life. And so there's an investment of time and an investment of paying attention and, a, and an investment of being present with that plant. Um, you know, in Planted Dyadica, we really encourage, you know, growing the plant if you can. So we, you know, we send out um, the live plant or seeds. We send out, you know, the dried herb for you to practice doing infusions and doing tea tastings. We send out um, different extracts, we all of the same plant because that one plant in many forms has so much different information to share with us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think too, you know, there's this also, you know, in this idea of building relationship with plants and that it takes time. Um, one of the one of the quotes I use a lot is from actually from Kierkegaard, right? And it's um, basically when you when you name a thing, you kill that thing. And what the, what the idea behind that is, is that oftentimes we can get stuck in this rote memorization of facts. Um, you know, it's like I can point at the plant and be like, oh, you're Rosemary. I know who you are because I know your name. Um, and we shut off our, we shut off all that incoming information that we could get through our senses, which I believe are very, very important sources of information. Um, and I know you're Rosemary and I know you do this and you do that because I read it in a book and it's like, you know, you think about it and if you were, if you were to approach a human being like that, like you probably wouldn't end up having a really good, you know, it's like, you know, hey, Ashley, I know you because I know your name and you're the <laughs> herbalist. So I knew everything there is to know about you. I'm just going to move on, you know? Yeah. And so it just doesn't, I think that when we start to look at creating relationships with plants, like we want to create relationships with people um, that we that we know that it takes time, that it takes curiosity, that it's not going to be something we can just, you know, quickly absorb and move on. Um, and I think the best herbalists out there are the ones that have this, these, you know, 20, 20 allies, 15, 20 allies that they've spent years and years and years and years and years working with. Um, then it's like you don't need to have, you know, 500 plants under your belt really to be a good herbalist. Um, but I think that having the relationship with those plants makes you a good herbalist. So, yeah. 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 I love that. And it's, it's true. It's, and, and I love how your school does offer the plants in all those different forms, you know, both the actual plant, the dried herb as a tincture, you do flower essences at your school. Um, you look at the planetary, you know, influences of each plant. And I, I think this really, it does, it paints a full picture of who these plants are. And then, you know, we are relational beings. We, we work best through relational um, uh, partnerships. And so I think that way of learning, and not only is it, um, is it easier, but it forms a more lasting, deeper impression. And I think it allows you to then connect to your client, right? Because your client also isn't just Jane. It's this person, the soul with all of this 
you know, all of these complicated emotions and lifestyles and all of these things. So, you know, when we can see plants in that way, we start to see people in that way. When we see people in this way, we see plants in that way. And so it can be, you know, can really enrich and, and, and deepen our, our offerings as herbalists. Yeah. Now, you know, one thing that, that you had, we had talked about before we, we, we jumped on was, um, you know, seeing an herbalist yourself and the real value of that um, in your own herbal education. Um, say a little bit about that. Did you, did you see an herbalist when you were starting off in your herbal studies? Yeah. So, um, you know, throughout the, the course of my herbal studies, and I will, I'll say even to this, to this day, um, working with an herbalist myself, was paramount to me kind of learning learning about what herbalism like what role it really can play in a person's life um and i do think that one of the best like if you want to work with other people um you know so for example you want to have a clinical practice and a dispensary like this one and you want to see clients and you want to do all of that first of all you need to make sure you're investing the time but also um, that one of the best learning tools is really starting to work with an herbalist yourself as a client. Um, because I believe that that really starts to open up um, the reality of what clinical herbalism is all about. I think there's, there's a lot of fantasy out there about what being an herbalist, like clinical herbalist is. Uh, yeah, it's like you're, you're out in the woods, you're gathering, you know, you've got an apron and you're gathering herbs and you're drying them and you're singing chants and using medicine. And, but, the, but the reality is, is that people have to take the medicine. And so, you know, that was one of the big things that hit me was when I started seeing an herbalist before I started herb school was like, oh, I've got to take these every day if I want them to work. Like, that's not, I, w I didn't realize the intensity of that. So, right, like that's one, that's just one piece too, isn't it? Yeah. And that the herbs can't carry the weight of all of the work on their own. Um, learning how, you know, the herbs kind of come in as tools I've mentioned before, um, but there's other work that has to be done that those herbs can support. But to ask herbs to do all of that work for us is, you know, it's just not realistic. And so I feel like, it gives you, it, it, it kind of breaks down some of the fantasy. It also gives you an idea about the implementation of clinical work and like how the, how it functions. Um, but also gives you an opportunity to like start working on yourself. And for me, I, I feel like, um, you know, from a clinical standpoint and for, for students who are wanting to go into that, into this work, that you have to be prepared to work on yourself first because you can only really guide and support clients as down the path as far as you have gone on your own path. And I feel like that's authentic. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. That the best practitioners we have um, in this profession are ones that are proactively working on themselves. Um, and I think that that's how we can remain kind of authentic, um, but also do the most good. So one of the things that happened during my herbal education as, you know, part of the educational piece, but also because I was working with an herbalist, you know, for myself, I went through massive shifts and changes in my, in, and I continue to, you know, in my, in my, in my perspectives and my worldview and my relationship with my own body. Um, you know, so I went through like all these different transitions and, and changes as a result of that work. And because of it, I think it, me a better practitioner and continues to make me a better practitioner so you know facing your own reflection and your own work on yourself and letting herbalism be that reflective surface for surface for you you know yeah that's such a great point because it's true it's we can only take people as far as we've gone right and and yeah if you if you're if you're not willing to go go into those those harder and more challenging spaces, it's gonna be really hard to take people through them. And I think, you know, each of us have different gifts and propensities as clinicians, um, but you'll never know what those are until you are challenged and, and also supported by someone in this work. So I, I agree. I, I remember when I was in herb school and saw a clinician too, and, and it just, it was, it was, 
it was more profoundly altering than I had realized. You know, I mean, I knew the plants were powerful, but I was like, oh no, they are, they're working on a lot of levels here, a lot more levels. And, you know, for me, one of the things they had asked me to do was to stop drinking caffeine because of some of my symptoms. And I was like, I'll never have to do that. But the plants actually helped me. The plants made me realize, become more sensitized to caffeine and realize, hmm, you know what? this is a plant, but this is a plant that's not a good match for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they, step by step, the plants also help me on my journey to, to shed some of the, the bad patterns. And I think that that's something that we have to be open to. And we, again, we can't know until we actually walk the path. Yeah. So let's, let's talk for um, a minute. Uh, we're getting to the end here, but I know people are, are thank you all for, for sticking on and watching. Um, but, you know, what are some resources? Like, you know, maybe you could tell folks a little bit about your school and programs um, and what's out there. You know, how do they find a clinician? Um, what are some ways that they can engage their senses in herbal studies? Yeah. So, well, from a, from, from a sovereignty herb standpoint, we have, um, we do have kind of like an intro program um, called Planta Dyadica, which is kind of based on, um, you know, the philosophy of phenomenology and Gertian science. And what that means is that the program is focused on helping you to hone your senses, your physical senses of taste and smell and sight, et cetera, um, to, you know, to, to learn to trust them as legitimate uh, sources of information, right? So, um, and that program runs kind of in the summertime, so people can keep their eyes peeled for that and always, you know, sign up for our newsletter in our link tree as well, um, because we kind of keep, uh, we keep people posted via newsletter. Um, and then we also have other kinds of programs that we do, collaborative programs that we do, for example, our upcoming Plants, Planets, and Psyche. Um, which is really great. We're going to be diving in with um, our friend Ash of Ritual Botanica into the seven kind of major planets and planetary archetypes and how they're expressed in the physical world, um, in the plant kingdom, in our bodies, but also uh, in the psyche. Um, so it's a really wonderful way of kind of framework for, um, you know, uh, exploring plants on that more on that level. Kind of on those all those all those levels actually um and then the majority of our work um the majority of our educational programming is really surrounding uh clinical mentorship and helping students of clinical herbalism who finish programs um land that leap into clinical practice um so we have a business course designed for that we have um a clinical kind of foundations mentorship um where you know you can sit in on my clients and i sit in on your clients and there's lots of support there um, so that's the majority of um, what we have on offer uh, as far as like our programs. But, um, you know, as a, as a registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild, there's a wealth of resources available on their website um, as far as, you know, different uh, schools that are out there that have different programs, both in person and online. So I definitely recommend checking out, um, you know, finding a school, you know, search function on the American Herbalist Guild website um, and also they have a practitioner um, search function as well so if you're looking for an herbalist in your area um, you know you can just type in your zip code and it will bring up people that are kind of close to you um, so i think that's you know the american herbalist guild uh, definitely can serve as a really wonderful resource for people who are trying to explore herbalism um, whether that be for education purposes or for working with somebody um, as well. So I think, I think that's really all I'd have to say about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would second that. I mean, I think that there's a lot of really good information on there and, and also, um, you know, I, I would just add to that, you know, uh, growing your own garden and even, you know, I've lived in so many apartments in my life where I just had things in pots, like on the stoop or in the windows, you know, rickety, like, you know, heaters trying to get at everything, you know, I, you can grow plants. They're pretty forgiving. So I would just say too, to add to that is just try growing a few of your own plants, like lemon balm is really easy, spearmint and peppermint, um, you know, yeah, anything in the mint family can be quite forgiving, but just try to grow a few herbs on your own and then experience them and, and play with them and, and let them start to guide you deeper into this work. Um, and yeah, and see where it takes you and, and don't be in such a rush. I think that that's true. I think, you know, for, if I, if I could tell my 20 year old self, 
you know, who was just so, you know, so excited about herbal medicine, I would tell her, take your time, spend more time outside with the plants and try not to get ahead of yourself in trying to plan out your future. Just <laughs> slow and steady with, with what, you know, your own self-care, your own patterns and habits and your own work with the plants. Yes. Yeah. And let that be your guide. I think that's, that's sound advice for sure. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Erica, for joining. And, um, you know, you can see her information here. I'm going to post um, ways to find Erica and her school, Sovereignty Herbs, um, in the comments. And uh, you can find me at Sky House Herbs. I have a one and two year herbal apprenticeship course. I'm on sabbatical this year because I'm building a new garden and I just need self-care time off. So this year I'm not seeing clients or teaching, but I'm going to be posting on my YouTube channel. Um, you can go to Sky House Herbs on YouTube and I post every week just fancy things I love about the plants and medicine making and poems and, and all of those sorts of things. I have a few interviews coming up with Seven Song and Kat Mayer, so um, you can check those out too. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, Eric and I are both busy because we love plants and we hope you'll join us. We hope you'll check out our work and uh, yeah, check out some of the, the plant topics that we are so excited to share. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Good luck with that. Thanks, Erica. What's that? Good luck with the garden. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm deep in the planning. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a definitely a very magical time with the garden. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.